Hi everyone. Today we're going to be making osobuco or braised veal shanks. It's a dish out of northern Italy and often it's served with risotto. It can also be served with pasta and gremolata. I'm going to take you through the steps to make it. It's a dish that's braised so that means it's cooked low and slow and uh, once you're done with it it's a very luxurious meal, very rich and um, uh, I particularly enjoy it because it's uh, it's very much a comfort food. Okay, so, here we have the star of the show, the veal shank. You'll notice that there's some um, connective tissue along the sides here and in between. And that's why we really need to cook it low and slow is because uh, that connective tissue can be quite tough. But over time and with a temperature of about 300 degrees Fahrenheit, the, the meat literally starts to fall off the bone. Often you'll see butcher's twine put around this. Um, we're not going to do that as this shank isn't as um, thick as perhaps um, some other shanks that you might get, but um, uh, nonetheless you know the meal is done when the meat is literally separating from the bone itself. Some other ingredients that we're going to use are about four cloves of garlic. We're going to use the cloves, the spice, some bay leaves, some thyme and rosemary and you'll notice some butcher's twine up top which is to make a, a bouquet out of these um, so that the the flavors of the the herbs can be imparted into the food without actually um, getting the, the stalks and such into the uh, the braising liquid obviously we've got our salt and some coarse sea salt and we'll need some carrots celery one large yellow onion some diced tomatoes and tomatoes, excuse me, and some olives. All right, here we go. So I've already peeled these carrots. And now I'm just going to turn them into about half inch cubes. Next, we want to peel our or rather dice or celery. And we want, again, about half inch cuts the celery. There you go. Okay, next for my onion, peel the ends off, stand it upright, cut it in half paper off. Okay, next we're going to give it a, a rough dice. There we go. And now we've got our veggies all ready to go. There we go. And now we've got our veggies okay, all ready. Now we've got some vegetable oil in my frying pan and I'm gonna turn it on to a medium high and we'll let that heat up. Uh, to the point that it's I'm ready. I'm also for going fire. to preheat my oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, now that the oil is nice and hot, I'm going to take the osobuco. Okay, now you probably want about one piece per person if they're as big as these. If they're a little bit smaller, then maybe you want to cook up uh, two pieces. But you're going to let these fry up and you want to let them have a nice golden brown appearance on each side. And then set them aside. And then inside the same pan, we're going to give our, our veggies a nice browning as well. Okay, I've just turned these over and you can see that they have a nice browning on one side. And I'm going to do the same to the other side uh, to seal in the flavor of the veal. Okay, now these have uh, browned. 
and I'm going to do the final batch of veal shanks before I'm ready to put them into the braising pot. Okay, now you see the difference in the color. This is uh, one that I just put on, and these ones have just come off. Okay, next, in the same frying pan that you break or that you put your veal shanks in and gave them a little bit of a browning, you want to brown up some of the veggies that we had diced up earlier. So we'll let those go for a little while. Okay. My veggies now have some color on them and I'm just going to add a little bit of minced garlic into there and I'll cook it for about another minute or two. Garlic burns very easily so you always want to add it right at the very end just before you're be ready to uh, to take it out. Once that garlic has a chance to uh, incorporate a little bit, I'm going to transfer the veggies to my braising pot along with uh, some of my braising liquid. Okay, now that my veggies are in my braising pot, I'm going to add approximately half a bottle of white wine. and we'll bring that to a simmer. Okay, now that the wine has reduced by about half, I'm gonna add about two or three cups of my stock into the liquid. And I'm gonna bring that once again up to a boil. Once at a boil, I'm gonna let it come down from the heat to a, a regular simmer. And in goes my bouquet garni, which has been tied up into a little bouquet using butcher's twine. And with my braising liquid uh, all set to go, I'm now going to reintroduce the veal shanks back into the mixture. And you want to make sure that, uh, that the liquid is about three quarters up the way of the veal shanks. They don't have to be completely immersed, but um, at least uh, about three quarters immersed in the liquid. And finally, we want to add the diced tomatoes. In they go. We'll give it a quick stir, and then it's ready to go in the oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for about two and a half, three hours to braise. Okay, the braising pot is in the oven. And I've also added salt, pepper, cloves. I also want to add about uh, two or three bay leaves as well. So we'll leave that for approximately uh, an hour and we'll check back in. Okay, the osobuco has been in the oven now for about an hour. So I thought I'd give you a peek and see what things look like. You can see the meat is starting to come apart a bit and you can't tell on the camera but it is becoming a little bit more tender but it still has quite okay, a while. Finally we have the osobuco here at two and a half hours. You can see that the meat is literally falling off the bone. It's very difficult for me to even pick it up without it falling off. And so this is pretty much ready to serve. You can. Take the osobuco off, or out rather, uh, and put it on a plate. And then the sauce right here, you can render down a little bit more uh, by uh, by cooking it on the stove top, letting it come to a boil and reducing it a little bit. And this will be the sauce for the, the pasta or risotto dish that goes along with it. 